This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it super easy to build a professional website for your online presence. I've always wanted to make a website portfolio to curate and showcase my artwork to potential clients, but somehow I've never been able to get around it until now. After spending a couple of hours fiddling with a portfolio website on Squarespace, I have to say that it actually is surprisingly easy to customize and put together a good looking portfolio website. One of the things that really impressed me was the huge selection of fonts, which I know kind of may seem trivial, but I really think that picking the right font to reflect the vibe of your artwork and subject matter is super important. And that was actually one of the points of frustration with some other website building experiences I've had before. The overall setup experience was super intuitive and there are some amazingly useful built-in tools such as basic image editing and filters directly in the website editor, something that I haven't come across before also and something that saved me a ton of time from uh, having to import the images into some other image editing program before putting them back into the website. The automatic image scaling feature for galleries is also a huge lifesaver. Everything looks super neat and tidy and shuffling around the images that you upload is super easy within the editor. If you're looking for a platform to launch your own portfolio website or shop, you can head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and once you finish setting up your website go to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art to save 10% off your first domain or website purchase you can find the link in my description below well hey you guys i have missed you very much i ended up taking an unintended hiatus for a few weeks and i was actually in the midst of rush planning a bunch of stuff from my wedding that I failed to do ahead of time, but I will tell you guys about that in another video. I'm finally catching up with YouTube and uh, I just wanted to start with a quick announcement, which is that I'm working on a new book with 3D Total Publishing. I've actually been doing this for several months now and it's finally ramping up, so I feel like this is as good a time as any to make a tiny announcement. I'm super excited for this new art book and I cannot wait to have more to share with you guys. Maybe I already announced it, I don't know. I don't think so, I do not remember. So anywho, in the meantime, this is the latest ink drawing that I completed. I kept calling it suitcase number two while I was naming files, but will now officially title it another day because it's just another day and I have been telling myself that a lot lately to calm down and carry on with what needs to get done. Yeah. So anyway, I have told you guys a bit about this character before. Her name is Heijin. She's more or less the main character in my comic series. I've been diving a lot into her backstory for the past couple of years and my sticker pack called The Traveler is actually inspired by a certain time period in Heijin's life when she spent decades roaming around the world with her companion. She's had a very long life, and I should probably clarify here that she in fact is not a vampire just in case anybody was wondering. But story snippet aside, I wanted to tell you guys about the process of this drawing, but a bit differently this time. Not so much the physical process of, you know, inking and diluting my inks and scratching the paper and all that, but the mental process and some things that it made me think about. So this would be a good time to cozy up with your sketchbook and maybe make some tea and uh, let's have a little sketchbook session or something, I guess. This is not really a sketchbook, but I digress. So yeah, I've mentioned in my previous video, which was somehow a colossal flop, by the way, I have no idea why it flopped so hard compared to my other videos, but in any case, I mentioned that I've been revisiting some old sketches that I never got around to finishing when I was working on the Traveler sticker set. And they really love my work from that particular Inktober, which was in 2020, I think, so a couple of years ago. So something I wanted to talk about is the fact that trying to recreate a vibe or a specific look from a previous illustration is really hard as it turns out. I thought since I've been drawing for so many years that why like why wouldn't I be able to just draw what I've done before? But I keep coming back to this set of illustrations as ones that I like the most out of my body of work and 
also the scholar where Noel is sitting at an antique desk. Uh, maybe some of you guys know what I'm talking about. All of these illustrations are up in my shop. Um, but anyways, after some thinking, I deduced that these particular drawings that are my favorites have a couple of things in common. Some of them, a surprisingly large amount of them, I actually did without recording the process, which is kind of a shame, but also mysteriously, they do have a very good result, so I'm not sure how much the camera plays into that, but um, the most thing, the, the best, the biggest thing that they have in common um, is the fact that I did not do a digital sketch for any of them. So actually, all my favorite drawings of mine were done without a digital sketch and I still did not quite understand why it seemed to make such a big difference. So this drawing being a second version of that suitcase piece from back then that I mentioned before, I wanted so badly to recapture the same type of vibe and I did like the digital sketch a lot for this. But despite this, I found the process of this drawing ridiculously boring and tiring. And this honestly really scared me because I almost never feel that way about making personal art. Typically, this only happens with client work that is just a huge workload or I just really don't feel particularly attached to in the moment or something like that. But with personal work, this is kind of a first. So this made me realize that there are probably some lessons to be learned here. So first of all, I must have drawn this sketch like two years ago. That is a very long time. And even though I still like the sketch a lot, I think there's probably some serious value in just executing an idea while it's still fresh in my mind rather than letting it sit around and rot for years and then trying to randomly exhume it like a corpse. I suspect that this is part of the reason why the process seemed kind of dull and boring to me. Then again, I was also very tired. I also realized that maybe my best work comes from a place that involves a bit more risk and a bit less certainty. So when I do a digital sketch, by the time it's done, things are pretty much set in stone. And the reason why I do digital sketches is because I just have this need for certainty. It's like I need to know exactly what I'm going to do and somehow that makes me feel like I am actively being productive, which uh, doesn't really make any sense because like, if I just sat down and drew something on paper, then it would be the exact same thing, but apparently that's not how my brain naturally works. So once things are set in stone with the digital sketch, then transferring it onto paper is almost like walking backwards a little bit because more often than not, something is uh, actively being lost in that transferring step of the process. And I typically have to go back in and try to recapture it after I turn off the light box. So that in itself is a bit of a drag. And if I start the drawing directly on paper, there is actually no recapturing anything uh, that is necessary because it's already more organic and requires more intense concentration since the process of solving issues never really stops. And I do think that that's actually what makes the process a lot more engaging compared to the digital sketching thing that I do. Sometimes I have to redraw a leg like a hundred times like you may have seen me do in my process video for the scholar but that is one of those rare drawings that I just started from scratch on paper and Sometimes, although it feels like a massive setback in the moment, it somehow always yields just better results from what I can tell anyways. And so, this drawing, Suitcase 2.0 or Another Day, was so frustrating and tiring to me that I wasn't even able to really see it after a couple of hours and couldn't finish it in one sitting. Um, I looked at it, it being maybe like 30 minutes or so away from completion, and just thought to myself like, man, this is honestly so boring. It does not even look good, and was it a total waste of time? Jesus. And then I just went to sleep immediately because I was completely mentally exhausted. But the next morning, something kind of bizarre happened. 
I looked at it again and I actually really liked what I was seeing the second time around. I noticed that there is a certain level of grace in the line work that I managed to capture that I haven't really noticed in my previous work and in the end I do like how this piece turned out. I still like it a lot. It was still good practice especially with pers especially with perseverance and um, I certainly have to do a lot of that lately but I guess the point that I was trying to make is that it's best to roll with an idea while it's still fresh, especially when it's a relatively simple idea uh, like these drawings, and even when it isn't. I also realized that my fear of taking risks uh, is a thorn in my side on all scales, micro and macro, which is something that I haven't really noticed before. Um, it is the thing, as I have uh, realized in late, like lately in the last couple of years, that keeps me from just diving into my comic, and apparently it is also the thing that keeps me from making more organic and spontaneous artwork on a like smaller scale. I really believe that in my particular case, the better results do come from spontaneity. Uh, this isn't even like radical news to me because it's something that i have noticed a long time ago but for some reason i just keep going back to the digital sketching thing and this is a good place to pivot to another thing that i wanted to tell you guys about because i do think that it is in fact pretty much completely related to what i was talking about just now so i often feel like some sort of fraud because the way i perceive it is this I often feel like my work seems to lack intense planning and like actual work, so especially the traditional pieces. When I just get an idea and roll with it quickly, I typically get better results, but I just feel like somehow I'm doing something wrong and I'm being lazy and it's just not right and it is not the way that things are supposed to be done. And like, how can I just roll something so fast? What about the planning? What about the preparation, the reference gathering, the thumbnailing, finding the best options, figuring out a color scheme preemptively, doing a digital version, printing it out, cleaning it up, doing tests, etc. I often feel like because I neglect so many of these commonly practiced steps of a process, I'm just some sort of lazy artist and I must try harder to be a quote unquote proper artist. I think this is the moment where I just have to tell myself that it's okay to just do what feels the most fun. So much of being an artist is measured against other people or your own bogus expectations. And honestly, this is something that just never goes away. It's like this bottomless pit of things to um, notice about yourself and your thoughts, I guess. It's like a can of worms that just never runs out. Anyways, yeah, another thing I wanted to confess is that I actually often feel like this underlying sense of guilt about actually being able to make a living as an artist and working from home. It's a bit of a tough one. I definitely have not enjoyed financial stability for my entire life by any means, not at all, and had some seriously dark times actually somewhat recently, I suppose, um, in the grand scheme of things, but finally having arrived at a place where I do have financial stability and, and I am doing more or less exclusively things that I choose to, it's still really tough to get rid of that underlying guilt. Even though I have already taken, taken many uh, risks to establish the position that I currently am in, and I do think that a fair analysis would say I do deserve to be in the place that I managed to arrive at, but still I feel this guilt like, no, I must also suffer. So, so many people hate their jobs and I must also find ways to hate mine as well in solidarity. It's like a soft form of self-sabotage, or maybe it's actually not so soft, I don't know. I would like to take this moment to promise to myself now that I will try to remember that it's okay to draw things for fun and I'm allowed to just enjoy my life because that is what I'm always striving to achieve anyway, but I keep pretending like I'm not there yet and for some reason i just finding a million little ways to make things seem more difficult than they actually are. I think uh, 
probably I'm not alone on this and I, I just need to really learn how to enjoy the position that I'm currently in instead of always thinking that I'm not quite there yet and I, I'm just not quite there yet. You know what I mean? But yeah, I do really like this artwork. I still love to draw, even though it's not my best, it's okay. I just have one more corpse to exhume and this one last corpse is a drawing of Heijin that I did maybe like four years ago, which is good grief, such a long time ago. But after that, I want to make some fresh art with fresh ideas and that is what I have promised myself. These are almost like these loose ends that I have to tie because these ideas are ones that I really liked and I am at the end of the day glad that I was able to come back to them and finish them. So yeah, I am pretty much done here and I do hope that this video was good company for you. It certainly helped me clear out some stale thoughts and after all, I don't want my YouTube videos to always be droning on and on about techniques, at least not all the time. And this is also a big part of my process. I've always taken time um, to clear out my mind by writing about it and trying to come to some sort of conclusion or at least actionable steps to take in order to alleviate whatever seems to be bothering me at the time. And so this time I decided to just write about it like I usually do and share it with you guys, which is something a little bit new. But yeah, I do hope that maybe it was helpful to some of you because I do know that these struggles are definitely not unique to me. And although not everyone has the same problems with art, I do think that people can probably relate on some level. But in any case, I do hope that you guys are doing well and I hope that this video was able to provide you some good company while you drawing your sketchbook or just to relax for a little bit. I'm excited to make more videos and I am planning to return to a regular updating schedule. I have a lot of artwork planned and I will tell you guys more and more about my current artbook project that I'm in the middle of working on with 3D Total. Thank you guys so much for leaving comments on my videos. It really, really helps me keep going and your support means a lot to me and I will see you in my next video. Bye!